Hello everyone! Welcome to the second part of the Arcade Bike Controller series. In first part, we worked on the main mechanics of the controller. If you haven't seen it yet, it's in description. Go watch it first. In this part, we will be focusing on further enhancing our bike controller. Let's get started! First of all, let's give our bike some stopping power. Create a variable braking factor to control the strength of brake. Now, create a function, brake. In it, check if the spacebar is pressed. When checking for the spacebar input, make sure to use get key instead of get key down. Unlike get key down, which returns true only when the button is pressed, get key returns true on every frame while the button is held down. Now, for the braking logic, we have to gradually reduce the velocity of our sphere RB. We'll do this by multiplying the current velocity by the braking factor. This factor should be valued between 0 and 1. To make things easier, divide the braking factor by 10. By this we can use values between 1 and 10 unlike previous decimal values, and set a range for the braking factor from 1 to 10. Don't forget to call this function in the fixed update method, and let's see how our braking system performs. It's working fine. If we increase the braking factor, the braking strength increases. Currently, the bike is accelerating even when in the air. To fix this, we need to check if the bike is on the ground or not before allowing acceleration. To check if the bike is grounded, we'll perform a ray cast from the center of sphere RB in downward direction. Firstly, create some essential variables. A float variable, ray length, a layer mask, drivable surface, and a ray cast hit with the name hit. In the start function, Set ray length to sphere RB's radius plus 0 0.02. Now create a function called grounded that returns a Boolean value. In this function, shoot a ray cast from sphere RB's position in the downward direction and store the ray information in hit. The maximum distance for the ray cast will be the ray length and the layer mask will be the drivable surface. If the ray hits, the function returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. Next, rename the movement function to acceleration. Select movement and press Ctrl plus R to rename the movement function to acceleration across all instances. This will ensure consistency and update the function name everywhere it's referenced. Create a new movement function. And within it, check if the bike is grounded and the space button is not pressed. Move the acceleration and rotation functions from fixed update to here. Additionally, move the brake function outside this if statement and call this movement function in fixed update. Lastly, create a new layer drivable and ensure that all drivable surfaces are on the drivable layer to prevent the bike from running on inappropriate surfaces. These changes will ensure that acceleration and rotation are applied only when the bike is grounded and brakes aren't applied, and the brake function will be called when bike is grounded. Now addressing the abnormal fall velocity of the bike, it's falling slower than normal. This is happening because we're altering the sphere RB's velocity. To fix this, we need to implement our custom gravity, create a float variable gravity, and then create a function named gravity. Inside this function, add force to sphere RB with a value of gravity multiplied by vector 3 dot down and use force mode dot acceleration as gravity is accelerating. Call this function in the movement function when the bike is not grounded. This adjustment will apply our custom gravity to the bike, ensuring a more realistic gravity simulation. Now as you can see, the bike is not behaving normally on inclined surfaces. To fix this, firstly, we need to calculate the X rotation by which the bike's body will tilt to match its alignment with the plane. For that, we'll find the angle between the bike's body and the surface normal, where our ray cast is hitting the drivable surface. Then, we'll rotate the bike's body by that angle in the x-axis. We'll create a function called bike tilt, which requires a float variable x rot to store the angle value. Here, quaternion dot from to rotation provides the angle between the bike body and the surface normal. Multiplying it by the current rotation ensures accurate rotational values. Using Euler angles.x, we extracted the x-axis rotation. 
Now that we have the rotation value, we'll create a new quaternion called new rotation, in which we'll store the desired x rotation while preserving the existing y and z rotations. We'll shift this code into our bike tilt function and set the bike's rotation to the newly calculated new rotation. Call the bike tilt function in movement. Let's check how it's working, but don't forget to add ramps to derivable layer. There's a problem. The rotation is snapping quickly. To achieve a gradual transition, we need to interpolate the rotation. Create a float named bike tilt increment. This variable will control the speed of the interpolation. Now we'll use spherical linear interpolation or slurp, which is known for providing a smoother transition compared to linear interpolation of lerp. In the bike tilt function, create a new quaternion target rot, which will be equal to quaternion.slurp. The initial value is set to the current rotation of the bike body. Final rotation will be x rot in x axis and the bike's current rotation in y and z axis and the interpolation ratio will be bike tilt increment. Higher value of bike tilt increment results in a faster rotation. To implement this, replace the x rotation in the new rotation with target rot dot Euler angles dot x. If you're wondering why we are using a variable as the starting value for the interpolation, refer to the earlier explanation in the first part of the bike controller series. It's covered thoroughly there. Let's check it out. It's working great. Now, let's make our bike tilt sideways when turning. To achieve this, we'll simply rotate the bike body along the z-axis by a specified angle. Begin by creating three variables, a float z-tilt angle, another float current velocity offset, and lastly, a vector 3 velocity. In the update function, set velocity to the current velocity of the bike body. Use inverse transform direction to obtain the velocity and local coordinates and then set current velocity offset to the velocity in Z axis divided by the maximum velocity. Returning to the bike tilt function, introduce a new float variable. Z rot equals negative of tilt angle multiplied by steer input multiplied by current velocity offset. Here, tilt angle determines the degree of the bike's tilt and we used its negative value because otherwise the bike will turn in opposite direction. Steer input represents user input for turning, and current velocity offset ensures that the bike only tilts when in motion. And also because of this, the bike will tilt according to the current velocity, so at slower speed, it won't tilt a lot. Now, we only want the bike to tilt if the bike is moving in forward direction, therefore, check if the current velocity offset is greater than zero, and then shift this Z rot inside it. Now, within the target rot, Replace the current z-axis rotation with z-rot, and in the new rotation, exchange the existing z-rotation with targetrot.eulerangles.z. Now let's take a look at how it's working. And it's working great. Lastly, let's make the handle rotate smoothly during turns. Create a float handle rot val to control the rotational value and another float handle rot speed for adjusting the rotational speed create a variable to store game object handle. In the rotation function, lerp the handle's local rotation in y axis to handle rot val. Multiplied by steer input, keep rest of the rotations unaffected. And we have one more issue, which is the bike is turning even when stuck, if we continue to accelerate and turn. To resolve this, multiply the rotational value in y axis by current velocity offset. This not only addresses the current challenge, but also aligns the bike's turning behavior with its actual velocity. Let's see how it's working. Looks good. Before we wrap up this part, crafting these tutorials involves significant time and effort. So please show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel. In the upcoming part, we'll dive into additional aspects like follow camera, skid marks, smoke, and other advancements. If you have any questions or want to share ideas for the next part, join our Discord community. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching.